Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. In this video, we're gonna continue on with Mastercam and I'm gonna explore uh, some more 2D milling features that are going to be helpful for internal geometry. So this is going to be slot milling as well as pocket milling. So I'm gonna jump back and forth between two parts, but I will focus on this 98431 part as the primary example. So that said, I'm gonna start with slot milling and I'm gonna continue on from where we left off with the contour milling as well as the face milling. So I'm gonna go in here to tool paths and I'm going to hit the drop down menu because we're not gonna be able to see this from that top bar there, but we're gonna look for slot milling. So hit the drop down menu and we're gonna look for slot mill. So we'll select on slot mill and we're gonna be careful in how we choose our geometry now because we wanna still maintain a climb mill cut or climb mill compensation. So instead of it going around clockwise like we would go outside, now that this is an internal or inside piece of geometry, I have to then go counterclockwise. So let's take a look at how we could approach that. So inside of the solid chaining here, I'm gonna select loop again, and it might be tempting for us to then click on this bottom left here and then have it go clockwise around like that. Well, that's gonna create a instance of conventional milling, which is going to possibly not give us the uh, best surface finish. So I'm going to actually unselect that, and I'm going to do the exact reverse, and I'm gonna to go to the top right here, or the bottom right here, and make sure that this is going around clockwise, or it's counterclockwise. So I'll select down there. So now this is going to create a climb mill operation or climb mill uh, compensation inside of our slot. So then I'll hit the green check mark. And then I'm gonna go and select tool. And this is going to be important for whatever slot size that you're using. So dependent on how big that slot is, we have to make sure that our tool is at least a little bit smaller or even size on size. And in some instances, that size on size is also going to create some problems as well. So be careful. You'll have to maybe choose a couple different tools in this uh, example. So I'm gonna go over here to filter. I'm gonna uh, turn off all these tools. I'm gonna go to end mill flat, hit the green check mark. And inside here, I know that this width of the slot is going to be 375. So I have to choose an end mill that is either a little bit smaller or size and size. Size and size will be a problem and I'll show that as example inside the pocket uh, example later on here, but I'm going to find a tool that is 60,000 smaller in diameter than the slot width. So my slot width is 375 minus 062. I'm gonna to go to 0.312. So that's going to be a 5 16th flat end mill. Let the green check mark, and then I'll do a rough slot. And then I'll go into holder, leave that all the same, cut parameters. I'm gonna leave stocked on the wall. I'm gonna make this 5 thousandths once again. And this all looks very similar to what we were dealing with with the contour uh, 2D geometry, but now we're gonna get into different kinds of parameters as we go through the rough and finish, and then depth cut. So here inside of rough and finish, if you chose to do this detail with a contour mill, you wouldn't have the option to do either a helical or ramp entry in, which would probably be a problem because then it would just go to the depth that you want it to cut to or in the incremental steps. And it's going to treat the end mill like a drill, which is not what it's meant for. So what we have to do is we have to ease that tool in as it's cutting that geometry because you are doing 100% engagement on that tool. So earlier we talked about that example in this corner here where if we have 100% uh, engagement at that depth, well, we're probably gonna damage the tool. Well, we have to try to mitigate that damage as well as possible by using this ramp entry. So it comes stock, it's just telling us that the tool is going to approach that three degrees as it goes to whatever depth that you want it to. Um, I actually am a little bit more conservative uh, when using these plunge angles, and I'm just gonna go to 1.5, so I actually go to half. So I'm going one and a half degrees at a slope to the depth that I want it to cut. And then the step over, we can leave that the same. All it's just saying is it's 50%, it's gonna step that over. And number of finishing passes, I'm gonna do zero because I'm gonna come back and do the finishing passes a little bit more aggressively. Um, depth cuts, I'm gonna make sure that I'm not going too far with this tool. Uh, and this is probably gonna get overridden with my ramp entry 
um, value of that one and a half degrees, but I'm still gonna uh, put an overriding value here of like eighth inch. I'm not gonna go further than an eighth inch. And typically with these rough steps, I would not go any further than half the diameter of the tool. So if I have a 312 tool, half of that would be 156. I would then only go max rough step at 156. In this instance, I'm even going a little bit more conservative and I'm gonna go to 125. Breakthrough, we're not cutting through the bottom of the part, so I'm gonna leave that the same. Linking parameters, I'll turn my clearance on, I'll change it to one, and then retract, clearance, uh, we'll go to absolute, 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 absolute. And there is a very good example of looking at our dimensions here and making sure that they're correct. So what this is saying is, hey, the top of the stock is still set at that stock setup value, and the depth is going to zero which is not exactly what we want. We want it to cut below. So I'm gonna to choose top of stock. I'm gonna select the top edge there, as well as my depth. I'm going to kind of go down here to where my slot geometry will end up. So I'm gonna select the bottom edge down here. So that's actually negative 0.5, and my top of stock is zero. Um, can then go and play in new top, new top, new top, coolant, and we'll just change flood to on and then the green check mark. So we have a handful of different tool paths that are being created that are then spiraling down in a slot function to the bottom level here. And we can change the number of paths that are being uh, created. So I can go back in here to parameters. And this is primarily being driven by this uh, ramp angle or the ramp entry. So if I change this to three, You'll notice that these will probably decrease by half. So I have way less passes, but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll leave it at three, um, but in, in a more uh, true to scale milling operation, I would go like one and a half and speed my tool up. But I'll, I'll leave it at three. You can also leave it at one and a half. Either one is gonna uh, work for you. And I'm going to then simulate this uh, tool path here. So I'll select all the tool path group one so that I can get to that face and then I'll go to verify. And then I will slow this down a little bit. It looks like we're already there. And then I'll hit the green check mark. So again, we're just doing our offset and our contours. And then look at this. So now this is a good example. We're checking our tool path. It's also going back up. So I haven't even gotten to the bottom of my uh, cut there and it's still going back up. So just like how we did with the face mill, we have to now go back into this and change it to keep, uh, keep tool down. So I'll let this finish out and kind of show you what it's doing. I'll zoom in here. I'll also slow this down a little bit more. And all this is doing is as it's cutting, it's ramping down that three degrees and it's cutting around and then it goes back and it ramps around. So you can see that ramp down there. So I'm gonna change that to keep tool down. And also this is a good example. I will just, uh, I'll show you what the time difference is between this one operation if we just select keep tool down or we don't select keep tool down. So this one operation here, the feed time is two minutes and 43 seconds. So if I change that one little detail, let's see how much time that's gonna take off. So I'll go back in here and I'll select uh, in rough and finish, I'll keep tool down. I'll also check and cut parameters. No options for keep tool down, should be good to go. So it's at two minutes and 43 seconds. And if I select the verify once again on that one specific operation, oops, let's see, is it going back up? All right, so it's keeping the tool down and it looks like it kept the, oh no, it went back up. Let's see what's going on there. Parameters, keep tool down, depth cuts right there once again. Sorry, another tick box there. I thought it was in cut parameters, but make sure that in rough and finish you have keep tool down as well as depth cut will keep tool down as well. So as at two minutes and 43 seconds, go back in here. Went to two minutes and 37 seconds. I feel like it should take a little bit more out of that, but I think the rapid retract is moving pretty fast. Uh, but if you have a lot of those that are coming back up, you can take a lot of time out by just keeping that tool down. So I'm doing another verify. 
doing our contour, offsets. All right, I'm gonna slow us down here. So you can see there, when it was approaching that, it was, let me just restart this, go again. And I'll try to go to that point right here. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna show you what that ramp function is truly doing. So I'll slow this down and I'll hit the play button. So you'll see the tool and it's going to then ramp into the face of the part. So it's not going that full depth. So even that first pass there, it's creating an angle from the center of that slot to a depth that's over here. And it's just going to move back and forth in that ramp. And once it's established itself in that edge or that pocket, or that slot, now it can start moving pretty good. So it's then creating another ramp there. So I'll let this continue. There's a good example of that ramp depth. So it's cutting that all away. All right. So that's pretty good on our slot. I'm gonna show you an example of a pocket now as well. So uh, this is going to be um, just a, a slight import. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another level. This isn't something that you have to do on your end necessarily, but I'm trying to show you it in the same uh, file here. So I'll do 98433, and then I'll hide all that, and then I'll go and I'll file, merge. I'm just doing this so I can keep all of my uh, work offsets the same here that I set up with my new planes. And now I have that T slot there. I'm going to go to toolpaths, toolpath group one, turn off all my toolpaths. And then if I had this part where I had to do this T slot down the center, I would then approach this with a different type of uh, toolpath geometry. So then I go in here to toolpaths. And I'd go, instead of using the slot mill, I'm going to now select pocket, which is right above it. So if I select pocket, it's going to create a very similar piece of geometry um, that we can now select either uh, a ramp or a helical approach, just like how we did with the slot. So with the loop, I'm going to then select down here in the bottom right, have this go counterclockwise so that we're maintaining our uh, climb mill approach and then I'll choose my tools. And I'm gonna use uh, the, um, I'm gonna use a 5 16 end mill and see if it actually cuts. I might have to actually move that down a little bit because I know that these radii are a little bit smaller than the 5 16 So I'm gonna use that 5 16 end mill once again. I'll do a rough, let's do a rough um, pocket. And then we'll go down here to cut parameters, stock leave on wall. I'll make this five. I'll make this five. And then roughing entry. I can choose any uh, cutting parameter pattern that I want. Uh, typically, I just do um, just a parallel spiral. Uh, that's usually pretty good for me. You can also keep like constant overlap. I usually use these two the most. Uh, so I'll just do constant overlap or parallel spiral. Uh, and then I'll go into here to entry motion. Uh, I would always use a helix in this instance. I think it's a little bit better. Um, if you wanted to, you could also go into ramp and then you know do the same thing that we did before and change the angle. Uh, but I'll just do helix and let the, uh, the uh, piece of geometry figure out how, how the best approach it. Finishing, uh, I'm gonna turn that off because I'm just doing like a roughing operation here. Um, I'm gonna go back in here to cut parameters and look for any keep tool down. Looks like there's none. And then I will go into depth cuts. Uh, depth cut, I will then change this to do like an eighth inch again. Uh, and this is where I wanna keep tool down. And then I'll go into linking parameters. Clearance, we'll leave it at one. And then retract, absolute, absolute, absolute. Um, top of stock. 
we'll have it at zero here. So any one of these, and then depth, I can go down here. And then we'll go over here to planes, new top, new top, new top, coolant, flood, on. All right, let's see what it did. And this is a good example here of these sharp corners. I wanna see a radius when this tool path is created because I don't want my tool to hit that corner and then immediately move uh, 90 degrees. This is gonna create a deadhead situation where it's gonna make chatter in that corner or um, it's just going to uh, make the tool uh, squeak uh, and like have chip overload and that could damage the, uh, the life of the tool as well. But I'll do a little um, back plot of this. We won't do the full uh, verify. Oops. Play. So we're just cutting. So it helical it down in there. And then when it approaches here in the corner, it's going to be 100% engagement of that entire radius with that tool. So I actually want to probably use a smaller tool in this instance. And I'll do a, a quick verify of this. Oops. I'll actually select the facing as well as this pocket here. I'll do a verify of both of those. Go through that. And then this is going to be that pocket, that T-slot. So this is gonna be a little bit different than a standard slot. Uh, this will be actually a pocket detail. So we're just cutting away those edges there. And if I wanted to make this a little bit better uh, with that toolpath, especially that we're seeing there in those corners, I'm going to choose a smaller tool in this instance. And if, instead of it being a 5 sixteenths, I'm going to do a select tool library. I'll go to a, oops, I'll filter it first, get my end mills. And then I'll filter it for a uh, quarter inch flat end mill. And now when I hit the green check mark, this tool is going to have some room to breathe now. I'm not going to overload it in those corners and have it deadhead. So you can see that the toolpath geometry that is being displayed now has a radius in that corner. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at your toolpath. You might have to choose something that's a little bit smaller. Uh, and just like how we did before with the contour milling, um, I can you know copy these and I can paste them and then I can go in here and I can just go to uh, instead of a roughing and leaving you know stock to leave on walls I'll just do zero and zero and this is where um, in my finishing I could probably leave that the same but then my roughing or sorry my depth cuts rather um, I will then just change it to no depth cut so it does the entire depth and cuts it in one pass. So that's what I would also do on that slot detail. Um, just go ahead and copy it and then also include this uh, or remove the depth cuts so that you're um, doing one pass at that final depth. And then make sure that your cut parameters are zero and zero on your stock to leave on walls and stock to leave on floors. But that should leave you in a pretty good spot um, if you want to approach these slots with the slot mill, you can also use the pocket uh, detail with the slots as well, uh, but it's just dependent on how you want to approach them. You can either use the slot or pocket, uh, but when you have a detail like this T here, this T slot, you have to use the pocket over the slot. Uh, so just keep that in mind and, and look out for those kind of things.